Hey, welcome to the greenhouse. I'm Alex. Today we're going to talk about solar energy stored in the soil. Come on. Sunlight powers so many things that happen on the earth. The sun powers photosynthesis and ecosystems. It powers weather in the global hydrologic cycle. And it can power human communities if we're smart about how we use energy. Incoming sunlight is absorbed by the earth's surface and stored in the ocean, rocks, and soils. This is energy that can be used by natural and human communities. One way to understand how this works is to measure the temperature of the soil. You might guess that soil temperature is different in different places and in different seasons. We'd like to make as many measurements as possible to explore this variation, but for now, we'll keep it simple and measure a short temperature profile in one spot. Okay, so we're gonna use regular kitchen thermometers and we're gonna put them in the soil at different depths to see what's, um, what the temperature is and what that tells us about solar energy. So one of these I'm going to take and I'm going to push it in as far as it'll go. All right. The second one we're going to put in to a depth of about an inch. And then the third one we're going to leave out so that it can give us the air temperature. So here's our air temperature, 32.7. Here's the temperature at a depth of about an inch, 37.46. And here's the temperature at a depth of six inches, 31. You can see that they're different. The deepest thermometer shows the highest temperature. Let's graph these to get a better idea of what's going on. Why is the deep soil warmer than the surface soil or the air? It's from stored sunlight. In the summer, when the sun warms the landscape, some of the heat diffuses downward into the soil. As the seasons change and the environment cools, the subsurface cools as well, but much more slowly. If the rate of cooling is slower than the seasonal change, the subsurface will stay warm all year long. If we use some higher tech tools, we can record soil temperatures from greater depth and we can record them all day or all year long. So this is a data logger. This is a circuit board that reads and stores sensor data. And this one's got space for four different sensors. These are soil thermometers and I can bury these at any depth I want and leave them there all year. Here's data for a 24-hour soil temperature profile taken in August in New York State. There are three thermometers, one at 2 centimeters, one at 15 centimeters, and one at 40 centimeters. That's about 15 inches deep. The time is shown in the upper right corner, and we'll watch the day go by in the left-hand panel. You can see that from day to night, the largest variation is at the surface, and that the temperatures are much more stable the deeper down we go. Notice also that in the afternoon, when the surface begins to cool down, that the deeper soil is still warming up. The fact that the subsurface has a very stable temperature year-round is really important for natural ecosystems and for human communities. Soil temperatures that never drop below freezing, even in cold environments, mean that the roots of plants can make it through the winter without freezing, and animals that hibernate underground can also make it through the winter. And think about this, in summer, if the ground is always cooler than the air temperature, and in winter, it's always warmer, isn't that exactly what we'd like in our homes? What if we brought that warm soil energy into our heating system in the winter or enjoyed the cool subsurface temperature in the summer? We can take advantage of that stable subsurface temperature for summer air conditioning and winter heat. We'll talk more about that in another video, but think how much energy we could save if our houses and our communities were set up to take advantage of solar energy stored in soil. How cool is that?